What I'm going to show you now is uh, a few things inside of Loop Elements Pro that you might not know. You might not know about these things. Uh, so first thing, which is really cool that you don't know, you can actually resize the plugin. So there's a little button here next to the settings button that actually lets you resize the plugin. I can go 150%, I can get it really, really big, or I can go 50% and get it really small, small, you know? Because when you start working with other, and all our plugins are like that, when you start working with other plugins that have different GUIs and stuff, sometimes you just need to be able to get them small enough to where you can fit them on the screen and be able to kind of do something with them, you know what I'm saying? So that's one thing. Uh, about Loop Elements Pro that is, you might not know. You just might not know that that little button there. The second thing you might not know is that there is uh, a way that you can actually change your sample uh, library. You can put them on any drive you want, any other place that can be done just by clicking on your sample, change sample library and pre uh, preferences, and you can move that to there. Uh, you can also turn off the tool tips. As you can see, those are these little things that pop up right here in this little corner over here. So when I mouse over something, see how it says loop four, loop three, loop five, emphasis, all of those things like that. Uh, you can easily, easily jump over here to preferences and turn that off, right? And literally do that. Now they're gone. In case that annoys you, it doesn't annoy me. I like seeing it, but you can make them turn them on and off just by doing that in the settings. Another thing that you might not know is that you, because sometimes we forget the key the key commands. There's a lot of key commands inside Loop Elements Pro, and we forget about those. Uh, you can either go straight here in Preferences and click and show those key commands just by pressing uh, that button, and you can see all of the list of key commands. Or you can just press K on your computer keyboard. You just press the letter K on the computer keyboard and that pops up, or you can do it from here inside of the settings. You can also check for updates if there is one, uh, and you can click here to watch the tutorials. It'll take you to a YouTube playlist uh, where you'll find all of the videos with that. And you can also get links to all our other plugins and things that we get right here inside of the settings, all right? Uh, so that's a few things that you might not know about Loop Elements Pro. A few other things, I've talked about this a little bit, but I did have some questions about it, so I wanted to jump in and talk about it like directly. But like there's little things like this little stereo mono button, right? So if I play this loop, I'll turn on host sync. Right now it's playing in stereo. So you can hear stuff going left and right. You click this button, everything goes into mono, right? You might know that already. But one thing you might not know as well is that you have the ability to do that on each channel strip, right? So in here, each channel strip, and let me just kind of blow it up a little bit. I'll make it at 125, just so you can see it a little bit bigger. Under each of the, on the channel effects, when you launch those by pressing these little buttons down there under the channel, you can easily make anything mono just by clicking this button under uh, the channel effects, right? So like this, so you can hear, it's kind of doing that sort of thing, right? So I click this button, now it's mono. It's coming straight up the center. Into the stereo. So that's a lovely little lesser known fact you might not know about running loops inside of loop elements is that you can easily do that. So here's the other thing that's really, really cool that I wanna show you. Uh, and so the really, one of the really big secret features that you might not know about Loop Elements Pro is with the MIDI. So I'm gonna take here, you can drag MIDI out of it, right? You might know this already, and put it into your DAW, right? So you can drag that out for this little section right here and we'll solo it. And when now when you go into this mode and you have host sync on and you drag the MIDI out, they double up. So if I play here, so you have internal play right here, right? But if I loop this, you hear that? You hear how it's doubling up? That's because I have host sync turned on. And so it's, it's triggering the internal MIDI 
right? You don't want that. What you want to do is turn host sync off so that you're not triggering the internal loops and triggering the external MIDI, right? So now that's off. So when I click the play button, it does nothing, right? But when I hit the play and run the MIDI, it's doing that, right? So what's cool about that is down here, if I go to the track, all of the slices are actually mapped across the keyboard. So if I play, <laughs> everything's mapped on the keyboard. So this, this creates like a really dope opportunity for you to be able to like be really, really expressive with loop elements, right? So you're not just tied to what's in the thing. You can actually take this because you have access to this MIDI and I'm gonna jump down here to a whole nother section and I can actually just record my own loop using this, this just the slices on the computer keyboard right here. So I got these slices, I can literally just record whatever I want right here. So, okay, let's make sure my metronome is going so I can just literally just do this. Right? So now I got that. I'm just recording with loop elements. This is crazy, right? Let's quantize that. And I can create my own loop adjacent to what's already looped in there. So I'm just gonna. It's crazy, right? So all it is, again, you're manipulating the slices. Each slice that's in the MIDI loop is mapped across the, the regular keyboard. Another way that you can kind of play with this because it's MIDI, you can go into your piano roll here with loop elements on the track. And I can experiment with this. I can kind of get weird with it, right? Let's maybe we want to, I don't know what this is gonna sound like. I'm literally just messing with it in the piano roll, because there's a lot of producers y'all like to play with the piano roll. I'm just seeing what that sounds like. Let's see what that sounds like. Look at that. And then you know the hey, where's the hey? Hey is right there, right? So I can insert, since I know that hey is right there, I can insert that in wherever I want. Maybe I wanna make that kick play twice. Let's, let's create a note right here, I don't know. And I think that's really, really cool because it allows you to kind of really, really get down and dirty and really kind of mess around because you're working with MIDI. Now, this doesn't what this doesn't do is this is not where you can take this and import this back into loop elements, not yet, or save this. You can manipulate the MIDI though on the track. I hope that makes sense. So this is not like changing. This isn't like you're not you're not changing what's in here because if I turn host sync back on, that loop is already predefined and it's playing. These are the internal loops. This is the external MIDI. So if you wanna work with the external MIDI, you have to turn host sync off, otherwise you're gonna get something that sounds like this. You don't want that. 
So if you're going to work with external MIDI, it's important that you turn the whole sync off. And now you can really get down and dirty and intricate. And you're not, that means you're not locked in or linked in exactly with the loops that you have. You know what I mean? You can experiment and do whatever you want to do with them and manipulate them and create, take a loop and make it into a whole nother loop where I can experiment with it. So that's the benefit of using loop elements in this fashion. Like I said, it's like, it's just a secret feature that you might not know about. Uh, just, you know what I'm saying, from utilizing that. So I wanted to kind of show you guys. Y'all wanna thank you for making it to the end of this video. I hope you found it relevant and helpful to your workflow and you got something out of it. If you did, please drop a like down below. If you didn't, I appreciate you for watching anyway. All right, but I'll talk to you guys on the next one. I'm out, holla at your boy.